so WebAssembly is the new thing in the browsers these days um, it surely is under highly under development at the moment but it's catching up pretty quickly and uh, it would be a very good thing in the future but it still has a long way to go WebAssembly what it actually means is that it is a new type of code uh, just like Mozilla says here it's a new type of code which you could run pretty much in browsers using JavaScript which runs at near native speed by near native speed what do we mean that we mean that it's pretty close to what assembly languages right assembly is just a bunch of instructions which could be then converted into machine code using assembler or something and it's super fast similarly WebAssembly brings that functionality to web and uh, once you have that machine code you could pretty much convert it into um, once you have that WebAssembly code you could pretty much convert it into machine code and uh, execute it on your systems which runs at native speeds right JavaScript on the other hand has a bunch of um, steps to go before it finally gets into machine code the compiler optimization you know um, on the fly compilation all that stuff happens with JavaScript which um, JavaScript engines like V8 does but WebAssembly skips all of that and with obviously with greater speeds comes some sacrifices that is in terms of languages readability and uh, you know you have to be more careful with your memory and stuff right because it gives you more power so you have to be more responsible so in this video let's just take a look at how we can write our hello world program in WebAssembly also if you're new here don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon it really helps all right, so you see that uh, when we write a code in C or C++ or Java, eventually everything after everything is done, just before the code is converted into machine code, it it is actually available for you to see in assembly. Similarly, for WebAssembly also, you need some higher level language like C or maybe C++ and Rust as well. Mozilla is working on that pretty hard. So you have to make use of those languages, the higher level languages. You could well technically write WebAssembly directly as well but in the most of the cases you won't be doing that you would be using languages like C or C++ so we're gonna make use of this WebAssembly.studio which is a browser based um, you could say WebAssembly tester at the moment where you could write your code so I'm gonna select an MTC project and I'm gonna create this right so what this gives us is well basically an MTC project so if we take a look at main.html here and let me just zoom in here a little bit if I can so that it's not um, yeah I think we are good there so this main.html file consists of our regular HTML you would expect right but we are including the script right everything so far so good if we take a look at this main.js we have something interesting here we are fetching something known as main.wasm which is web assembly module right once we fetch that, we obviously get some response as the text, that is our WebAssembly code. We convert that to an array buffer and then we instantiate that particular buffer, that whatever we got, that text we converted into an array buffer and then we instantiated that as WebAssembly code, right? At this point, WebAssembly code is finally converted into something your processor runs. And then once we have that, we are able to interact with it by calling all the methods and stuff. So let me just um, clean this up a little bit here and we're going to see how this really works. All right, so I trimmed down the code a little bit, used async await so that it makes sense. And uh, uh, this should be much more cleaner now. So what we are doing here is, first of all, we are fetching a file called main.webassembly. Now, this is not present here. It would be present when we build the code. And finally, we are starting off this WebAssembly module by calling WebAssembly.instantiate streaming. Now you remember that if we take a look at what we called, what we had earlier, we just had this instantiate, right? Now uh, instantiate streaming is the recommended way of doing by Mozilla because it skips this converting this response to array buffer and stuff and it directly converts it into your raw actual code which you want to use, right? So I'm gonna get rid of this and let's just try to save this file and do a build and run first all right so once it's built you're gonna get this output here task build is running and task build is completed and if we take a look here inside our main.wasm file which is generated 
you see we have that this is actual WebAssembly code which is generated from this main.c file which we're gonna come to later on right so we have this WebAssembly code we are fetching this code and obviously we need to call this async method in order for it to run this code so you see the, that we get this object object kind of thing but if we take a look inside our console we should be able to see a nice little WebAssembly related object right here which has these two properties called instance and module which we're gonna see pretty quickly what they are now before that let's just go back to our C code and see what's happening here so you see that we have a constant defined as wasm export which has this particular value which basically means that this function right here is actually callable from your JavaScript code. So let's just go ahead and create a function which actually returns us hello world. So this would be a pointer function. And uh, if you don't know about C or C++, then you, know, you can just basically stick with me at the moment. But uh, um, you would actually need to learn these languages in order to write WebAssembly code, right? So you're gonna just return hello world here, simple as that. And I'm gonna make this wasm export as well so that we can get this particular function right and I'm gonna hit save now if I build and run this you're gonna see that once we have our updated main.wasm file we see our data right here it is and um, there's the null byte which automatically gets inserted uh, with C and then we have something known as the starting address of this data and this is the place where we would start reading our data. Now, the thing with WebAssembly is that you cannot, at the moment, you know, directly go ahead and read strings and stuff, just like we do in JavaScript. You can only extract numbers out of it. So what we want to do, first of all, is we want to get the memory buffer of what we have in here. So I'm gonna say my buffer is actually the module which we have and we're gonna get access to the exports of that particular module. So once we have ex once we have access access to that exports, and let me just fire off my console here so that I could just show you here. So once we have our um, instance here, uh, which is essentially our module, we have access to this exports. We see we have all these methods right here, right? So what we want to do is uh, first of all, wait, 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 wait. We want to get our instance from here right so once we have access to that what we want to do is instance instance dot exports and we want to access memory right here which uh, which actually holds our um, data inside our buffer right so you see that this buffer is an array buffer containing all the data but obviously we do not want everything right we want um, the data only which stores this hello world string so what we're gonna do is go ahead and say that my hello world which is um, a function which returns me a character character pointer inside somewhere inside this buffer how do i get access to that particular memory i'm gonna say let's say my pointer is um, instance dot exports and you see that we ex in exports we do have our method right here hello world which returns us the string now mind you this won't actually return us a string right here just like i said WebAssembly does not really work with um strings it just returns you numbers and stuff so we have access to um the the location you could say so you could say that this is an array with a lot of values right and somewhere right here our location would start where our let's say hello world would start printing right which uh, which are maybe like the ASCII codes of hello world H E L L O something like that right so this buffer gives us everything and this pointer gives us this thing right here right so the next thing is obviously we want I to point to pointer and I want to point unless I get that null byte that null byte right here which we had right this one so this pretty much looks like just like you how you would do in um, typical C so um, as long as we have that um, we want buffer of I to exist that is it's not null and I'll just do an I plus plus 
So once we have that, we are iterating over that particular block of memory. Now, what I want is I also want my string here. And I'm going to start concatenating that string with our buffer of i. But remember, we do not have this as string. We have this as numbers, which is the ASCII code value of h. I don't remember it, but maybe like somewhere like 97 to 100, 127, something like that. So we need to get that back and we can do make use of JavaScript here, string from char code. And there we go. So at this point, we have access. We have um, holded our hello world program or hello world string inside the string variable. All right. So one thing that we are missing here is that this buffer should actually be an typed array instead of just like a regular buffer. And now we could pretty much go ahead and say document and we could just get this container right here and say get element get element by id and its text content should be actually equal to string right save build and run and we're gonna maximize this so you see that we actually get hello world right here printed you see hello world is nowhere inside our javascript file it's nowhere inside our HTML file, no obfuscated code, nothing. We are actually getting this hello world from WebAssembly right here, which is uh, pretty cool, right? So here's your first hello world program in WebAssembly. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, press the bell icon, like the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you then in the next one.